Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another episode of DevOps Zack. I'm Arshad Zakaria. Today I have Chamla Linage, a software architect at LSEG, specializing in microservices and cloud-based large-scale systems design and development. So today we are going to talk about nice use case of DevOps. So let's get started. Hi Chamila, thank you for joining me us today. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, Darshat. How about you? I'm doing doing well. So it's a Sunday, so you know, getting ready for uh, Monday. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. <laughs> okay. And it's kind of rainy as well, so it's a good weather. Mm, so uh, okay. it's sunny here though. Ah, yeah, I I heard I heard that uh, very sunny in Sri Lanka. <laughs> so Shamila, uh, why don't you give us a small brief about yourself, what you're doing, and you know, uh, to the audience. Right. So yeah, my name is uh, Shamila Lienage. Uh, I currently work as a software architect at uh, LSCG Technology. Uh, a lot of people know the company as uh, MIT or Millennium MIT. So, so I'm mainly into uh, the development side and uh, the software architecture side. And I kind of have a passion for uh, DevOps related activities and uh, Kubernetes uh, based cloud native stack as well. So yeah, so that's a little bit about me and the, the what I do normally. And and I saw you're you're doing a lot of uh, related uh, some YouTube videos regarding Kubernetes, uh, microservices, service mesh, uh, most related to the microservices area. I have seen that, so uh, 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 it's it's really cool. You know, uh, I even uh, I I, I uh, watch few of the videos which you've done in mother tongue in Singhalese. So I didn't really appreciate right. that. Yeah, super cool stuff, man. Keep doing it. Thanks, thanks, Arshad. Yeah, that's yeah. a little bit of things I do, you know, trying to bring the knowledge up in the community as well. So, uh, yeah, glad I could help in that area as well. Uh, that's that's good. That's good. Later, uh, share the link with me so we can share with others as well <laughs> to the audience. Yes. Sure. Sure. So, uh, let's now the main topic, you know, it's all about DevOps, right? But doesn't matter. We can go off the topic. <laughs> it's 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 fine. So, uh, right. uh, we'll focus about today like you know uh, the uh, the operational uh, use cases of uh, the devops uh, the culture uh, and the the software architecture side and uh, you know about these building silos so many things so uh, the most important part is a mindset right because if you have a proper mindset yes you you can adapt to a lot of uh, areas a lot of things you can uh, you can able to uh, the share the feedback and uh, you know accept the feedbacks even though it's a good or bad it's it's the mindset so so developers operation mindset uh, uh, what, what do you think why it's very important and what about all about these mindsets yeah so i think uh, traditionally Arsha, so what, what we normally so i i come from a development background right and normally as developers mostly we focus on like getting the features out quickly so we kind of tend to look at most of the time the the realization of the functional use cases right so what the users expect uh, or like whatever the product manager uh, like explains to us how we build that feature and 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 at times i think mostly uh, mostly developers right looking at that mindset kind of uh, gives lesser focus on how the software is kept running right and we tend to mostly focus on building features uh, but not really look at the operational side of it and you know like uh, we build the software, package it, and like throw it off the wall where someone else keeps it running. So you know that that kind of a siloed uh, mindset or that gap is uh, they have like uh, seen that uh, uh, throughout uh, my career. So you know, like the operations uh, folks, or how we traditionally used to call them, right? So who keeps the lights on of, in a company. Yeah. Uh, kind of sees them as like you know developers sort of like they'd look at them like let's uh, for the fun of it let's call them like monkeys right you know <laughs> continuously build stuff and you know continuously yeah. breaking things right and then from the developers eyes they might see the operational folks as you know they are always hesitant to take a new change right or like kind of uh, slow so right, they might right. see the operational folks as you know, like slots maybe, right? Because they yeah. care about like having the operational stability, right? So al although we need to give out features, we also need to make sure that the the customers are uh, having like the uptime that we guarantee and like no one wants to 
like do a unpredictable change and bring the system down and like how fast he can recover so that i think traditionally because of uh, maybe the lack of sharing of experience or not knowing the entire process uh, that kind of have a like a very limited view of the uh, entire world or like how the software from beginning to end operates so i think that that mindset is something that along with the, the devops uh, whole uh, cultural adaptation and like how developers and operations work together kind of bridge that gap so now we know what pains go through in like in the early stages of software how, when we are building it and also now whoever like the developers and like everybody understands what kind of effort needs to be taken into consideration to keep the things running so you know uh, you know like uh, earlier that we would we might think that a restart is a simple thing right so you know just you terminate the process and run another process so uh, in a operational production environment uh, how critical and you know like the uh, the criticality of that has yeah. now has a view on the developers as well so i think knowing what everyone does and how it's used uh, throughout the life cycle of the software is a kind of a mindset that everyone should focus on no like uh, uh, focuses uh, yeah that, more, that, that i think the famous joke right there always that there's a famous uh, uh, kind of a memes also created like work defining dev but uh, ops problem now <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah exactly so it's like uh, the ball in the far i mean like the, the the ball right they're passing the ball always uh, between the teams and uh, uh, the, like you said that that the, the gap is there right the mm. uh, the in between groups that disconnected so uh, for for a good example like i i think i have uh, uh brought this up before as well uh okay a good example is in a in an office a culture uh, let's assume they don't like have a good like uh, best practices or whatever like you know uh, going with these mindsets and stuff uh always when they go to lunch okay the the back end team always goes together okay they celebrate their uh, birthdays and you know uh th- those events together and the uh, operation guys are separately so from there onwards i think i believe that uh, the the collaboration should come in like you know and currently now uh we can see the places they are adapting really really good with these mindsets and stuff uh, they do uh, like you know that brainstorm gamings maybe mm-hmm. online gamings and they uh, host events now online because of the covid 19 restrictions but still they, uh, they do some things like this so i think that uh, really important from even though it can be uh, a little thing when you're talking about a lunch out or like you know that but uh, imagine right if if uh, even that mindset is also like for a newcomer or like a newbie uh, they will get impact also they will think okay i should stick to only this group you, you cannot go and talk with others as well hmm. so they might think like that so uh, another one good point you go, uh, you were talking about that uh, operation process static so they very scared that operation guys are very scared to change small uh changes on the server so where <laughs> like uh, a configuration or whatever uh, they think that it can break like because like you said it's the uh, their main focus is okay the this uh, we have to cover the sla levels and uh, we should not break anything so yeah uh, i think uh like you said as a monkeys and that that thing it's is true because they're saying as okay uh, even me personally have experience right okay developers asking to change something in uh in the server like uh, okay it's a php one okay mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so when i when i rest to do it no you have to go through this this process you know you go to the dev check and you know you you wait the, 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 there's a flow right there's a code of conduct to follow so yeah. uh, now i think i believe that okay personally i have seen that the currently uh, the place are working and uh, we are doing really good i mean uh, everything is transparent we know what going on and we are doing uh, uh, stand up meetings you know uh, then reviews so you know we know what each and everyone is doing and uh, we know okay uh, this layer developer is uh, this week is busy we stuck with this thing so do i have to help them you know uh, that mm-hmm. thing is there so yeah it's 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 really important the mindset then uh, i think then only we should concern about other things as well yeah 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 that that's that's really true i mean like the end to end or like the full visibility of what 
everyone's doing and mm-hmm. how we collaborate with each, uh, each other, yes. right? So it's, I think, like like you said, small things like, uh, you know, having lunch or going yeah. out for a drink or whatever it brings, right? So having that team bond and not like a department bond, Correct. but rather like a full uh, team, right? So team. we own this together. So that mindset is, I think, uh, what glues things together and like end of the day delivers... Uh, High quality software. Yeah. So the same thing, Ch- Chamil. Okay, uh, okay. We, we can say okay for a startup, uh, very easy to adapt these things as small teams and stuff. So uh, uh, I know uh, you're working for a very large organization. So yeah. uh, when it comes to large organizations, uh, with the growth of the organization as well. So how is effects of this? Uh, you know, the, the silos. Like you know, how this impact in that area? Yeah, that that's a very interesting thing, Zach. So right, like. Uh, you know, uh, let's try to take it from an example, right? So, you know, okay. let, let, let's let think of like, a, you know, like a small tailoring shop, right? So, you know, once we want to get a, uh, you know, like a, a new suit or a trouser or something, if we, if we go to a small tailoring shop, there'll be one tailor, right? He'd be like measuring and then, you know, asking us to uh, pick what type of cloth we want and then maybe uh, cutting the model, He's, he'll be doing the that thing and also like uh, stitching it together, sewing, even uh, doing the buttons of the cloth. Everything will be done by a single person, right? So that's that's the thing with like startups as well. You don't have people dedicated. You do this. The your responsibility ends here like that. But when I you try to startup mindset is also different, right? Because uh, uh, in a startup, everyone thinking uh, is a startup, right? The job is easy, but. Uh, uh, for me, when it comes to startup, you sh- you should take more responsibilities. Like you know, you should do a lot of things hmm. uh, rather than a, 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 a huge organization, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like you have uh, you have to have like know a lot of the areas as well, right? So you know, uh, not only development, like how do you do uh, the deployments, how you manage change, and you know, even the production deployment. So in a small organization, you you get to work with like the the whole cycle of things, uh, right? and I think the financial side as well, the FinOps especially. So uh, that, mm-hmm. that's a, the, that's a one of the key areas as well because I've seen uh, for for example like uh, the cloud bills, right? Because uh, they get the credits and stuff, they just uh, kind of uh, uh, like misusing them, them. Like not every everyone, what I'm saying, like you know, uh, misusing the clouds, uh, the the whatever the cloud vendors, maybe AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, Oracle. Uh, the credits usually startups they get initial credits so right. again uh, the visibility is not there for the financial side they think okay uh, uh, <laughs> we have everything to do it but uh, i think that's a good point you mentioned uh, should know about everything inside the organization yeah yeah, yeah. And ultimately like you don't want to get surprised when you finally run out of the credit and then get the bill right <laughs> <laughs> and someone created the uh, c5 to lx large instance in another different region <laughs> and forgot to shut down or something yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so there i think uh, when when it comes to large organizations like if we try to put that analogy again right so if you take a small tailoring shop to a large so like a factory that produces a lot of uh, you know, like garments or something like that. Uh, you know, you'll you'll get people focused on like like very dedicated or pieces, right? One would be just cutting the blocks. Another one would be just you know like stitching uh, things or like doing a part of the shirt, only the arm, right? Another one would be doing the pockets, or then uh, you know someone else doing the buttons, and you're like only focus. So I, I think like the same thing kind of happens in larger organizations as well. You you create silos, right? So you, you create people focused on, you know, you are doing software testing and this is your scope. Uh, you know, if that doesn't work, you put a bug and that's your responsibility. And the developer is supposed to, you know, like uh, do the development, uh, release it to QA like that. And then after that, you know, when the, testing is passed you hand it over to someone else and you don't really the others doesn't know what the other person does so that i think is uh, especially it's uh, you know how the the kpis for each of the departments so each of the uh, individuals are defined i think kind of affects right so maybe uh, for the a developer for the number of lines of uh, code that you write 
uh, a measurement might be how many bugs came out right so how many coverage you got but for uh, testers uh, or quality engineering it might be a, a different kpi so when i think especially when organizations get large uh, that siloed uh, mindset and like whole uh, friction uh, like comes together with that right it's uh, then becomes very uh, difficult and like we uh, you also mentioned like it comes to a a ball passing thing right so i did my part someone else didn't do that part so i think they are again uh, what we i mean like there there could be different kpis and uh, different uh, performance evaluation metrics defined for uh, everyone but ultimately i think there should be a a, a shared measure that uh, measures how uh, the the end to end product was used by the customer and how a quality delivery was done so that captures everyone's uh, kpis together right so it doesn't matter how well your code is written if it you know can't survive a restart or if it's uh, you know one it's the deployment of that uh, takes huge burden and there's no easy way of you haven't thought about the automation of that uh, once you are deploying although the functionally it works properly uh, i think that kind of thing also needs to be taken into account so uh, i know it's it's not a easy thing to do right especially yeah, when it's, you it's, like it's uh, definitely it's not easy but it will take some time not within one yeah. night yeah but i think yeah with a with a proper i think those kind of things should come top down as well right so from a organization yeah. mentality wise as well the whole uh, the process so like the guidelines that you re- define should also accommodate for that meaning that uh, you know all of us are responsible ultimately for whatever customers are seeing and how good they are uh, like rating us right so not only defining individual uh, you know like department wise uh, kpi so performance evaluations but rather have goals so performance metrics that covers the overall uh, quality of the software uh, and that having that kind of uh, evaluation you know kind of uh, is something that i think we should target on right yeah, and, and, and the blameless culture also right that yeah thing. exactly exactly so i mean like uh, yeah so it's it's i think more or less again like how you learn from your mistakes and not getting penalized for that right exactly. and not pointing he did that but as a team we couldn't do this uh, well in this release how can we improve in the next release right so and yes. then there's a learning for everyone there that that's a really hard one to be honest because uh, uh, very uh, i mean like currently yes uh, we have that culture already uh, in singapore yes I've, like my past company is a current place uh, the blameless culture and uh, uh things we do with a, a, a great teamwork and especially the appreciations like uh, if, if something done well the how they share the appreciation really really uh, impressive so for me personally which makes uh, you know uh, motivates a lot and you know do a lot uh, <laughs> for the team and improve myself as well and uh, that 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 bond is really really important to build uh, in a devops culture i think yeah yeah true say yeah so uh let's let's talk about some uh, use cases <laughs> uh, i think that's really interesting for the audience you know that uh, we are talking about the the methodologies and you know uh, things but uh, in real scenarios like use cases uh, in software architecture uh, you can share something uh, about your with the experience you know yeah yeah so p- personally like i'll take from my experience right so earlier uh, most of the time even when we are developing or like uh, doing the initial designs of the software uh, i tend to follow more of a like a, a feature oriented or functional requirements uh, only kind of thing true we thought about you know like maybe we think about the scalability uh, of the software architecture of course uh, it's a non functional thing and we Uh, think about it but uh, i personally missed most of the time like the use cases of the 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 operational aspects right so we talk about whoever is like consuming the software it might be you know like a student or a uh, educator or whoever is using the software we it's, it's kind of defined right so what they want the, as the feature but 
but uh, personally what i earlier realized is we are only more focused on the end users use case and not really focusing on the operational use cases right so in the sense uh, what i what i mean by operational use cases is how do we get the for example the metrics out of the software it's performing it's functional but is it really uh, operating in the way i want like i am expecting this software to be uh, you, you, you're talking about the observability right yeah the observability i mean like yeah. uh, how is it like what is the memory footprint over time how mm-hmm. memory footprint of cpu is uh, uh, increasing or decreasing right and then uh, what kind of load it uh, puts in the databases how it behaves in a concurrent access so we we expect our software to like behave in a particular way but sometimes there's we don't really like put enough logs so uh, measuring criteria uh, to see that right and sometimes even if we let's say uh, like that measuring is there and there's like we put uh, different monitoring software uh, to monitor how things operate in production we don't really focus on that or get that stats back and analyze right so i've i've like personally i haven't uh, Uh, done that in the initial uh, stages but then once i started looking at that it it kind of gives a lot of insight right so i suddenly realized yeah, okay definitely. like uh, i'm but what i expect the software to run is not how it's exactly running and then i mean there's a difference right and then uh, it it adds a lot of uh, like uh, caliber or like a lot of uh, potential to your career as well knowing about those stats as well so considering uh, like putting enough of logs or enough of metrics and analyzing the data again to see is it behaving in the way i am like expecting this software to work on and also like uh, i mean like how a software could be restarted even that uh, is a is a crucial thing right so if you are you know like taking ages for a reboot to happen and uh, you are expecting that to be be auto scale that's a very uh, very naive design i would say right you haven't yeah. like thought about it auto scale yes uh, the good point you mentioned that uh, okay uh, even though we have auto scaling imagine right okay your application is like uh, you have to preload things so you have the golden emi but still uh, it has to start and you know run the health checks and stuff it will take ages but so in certain scenarios like uh, sudden spikes hmm. definitely it's not a good uh, uh, option right yeah yeah and especially like uh, even in there so if you start building the state in a particular machine and then machine goes down the, the whatever comes up with the auto scaling or like for the failure recovery that has to like rebuild the state again right so you know at, that's again a bad design so you, you should have like externalize the state and have the state in a separate thing right and then uh you know whatever comes up doesn't have to take a whole lot of time trying to rebuild the state but uh, it can like connect to the uh, the state machine and get the state so like that uh, you know like architectural side as well as the you know like uh, putting more thought into how this software is operated at the initial design stage right so exposing the correct metrics the health checks building that as a part of the initial uh, architecture itself kind of uh, helps create better software so then you don't have to like go to the last point when you are trying to release the software and someone ask okay where is the health check and you don't have to give like oh i didn't put a health check so can't you just hit a existing page and get a health check from that or when i when you are trying to expose metrics uh, i didn't write any metrics exposing endpoints can't you just you know use the the process metrics only right so that's a, i think uh, some of the uh, personally bad mistakes that i have made but i have learned from that as well so you know ultimately to do monitor your software or scale your software it's ultimately you are the person who knows your software best so it's, it's, it's your baby you right to, actually <laughs> yeah so you have to expose the correct metrics right so if you don't expose the uh, the correct heap size i mean auto scaling won't help you because you are not exposing the correct metric right so if exactly. you are consuming messages from a queue if you don't know the lag and you don't expose it to external metric you, you cannot scale uh, depending on the real requirement that you want so you know uh, 
So you mentioned, uh, right, you have a, 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 a memory intensive application and yeah. you're scaling through a CPU level, for example, simply like, like the example, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of people have help. seen like uh, you put auto scaling. Since you're not exposing metrics, they go with the default metrics. And you, I mean, like, it's it's not what you want to do, right? Exactly. It's, uh... <laughs> Actually, the question should be why, right? Why why, why we want this one, right? Before before we go with this thing, what and why, both questions, yes. Mm, so, yeah, true. Uh, I would like to add a few things uh, when you're talking about these, uh, your, your use case. Even personally, I have this uh, uh, experience. Uh, it's a good point, you know, whenever a lot of uh, the newcomers, newbies asking, Okay, if you if you want going to a DevOps industry, what should you know? Uh, do I have to be a software developer, or you know, I should be able to do programming algorithms? Uh, my answer is yes, because right, Shamila. So if I if you are going for a product based or project based company, you may have to, like you said, uh, we have to take care of our baby, right? The application. For example, I will talk about a product based company. So right. I have a product, and uh, I should know how these. Uh, in and out how this application is working i can't i can't just put, pass the ball to the development team saying okay i am just worried, i'm just going to uh, do the operations i'm not going to check about this i don't care about, about what the code is written on which language and which version i don't care no that's the wrong answer right because uh, it's your base basically it's your baby right yeah. so you should be able to uh, take care of your own baby so an- another thing is uh, when it comes to the metrics like you mentioned again uh, the SOC team or NOC team, they have the security scans and, you know, the monitoring and the, uh, they do the, the metrics like uh, the utilizations and stuff. Uh, another example is, uh, again, I'm, I'm talking about the money because, you know, money matters end of the day, right? Because the company, <laughs> it, it, it will impact your ne- next year uh, review. I mean, like uh, your appraisals and, you know, your salary increments, everything. If, if you're just uh, wasting your company money, <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's going to be impact not only you, everyone. So uh, this example is about, uh, imagine like a bad query, right? Bad SQL query. Right. Uh, rather improving the query, what they're doing is just increasing the in- RDS instance, RDSO, whatever the, uh, <coughs> the managed database or maybe uh, uh, inbuilt database. W- what I'm trying to say is the cost, right? You're just increasing yeah. the uh, server, uh, the, the size of the server, but not focusing on those metrics like you mentioned. Like uh, the, the, for this case, it's about the, uh, utilization of uh, of the uh, SQL queries. So that's, see, right, the small query can be impact millions for a company. So uh, I have met a lot of good f- friends of me, uh, DevOps engineers, enablers, all, to- especially few things they're ma- mainly talking, they, what they're doing is like when they're joining a new company or new organization, they go in and out, question the developers about this application. They understand the application flow, how it works first, okay? Hmm. Yeah. I, I do the same same process, same uh, uh, thing, how the application is working. Otherwise, I cannot uh, help the team because I don't know how it's be- behaving, right? The second one is the cost. Always try to reduce the cost. That's really important because uh, you you can run a WordPress on a huge Kubernetes cluster, I always say, <laughs> uh, using Istio, a service mesh. Uh, and same time, you can use a, a normal uh, single node or hosted service to host the WordPress site. So there are two different things. Why and what question is there? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Zach. So I think, yeah, so for uh, the, the even the SQL thing, right? So I've also seen like... Uh, most of the time it starts as let's temporarily increase uh, this instance, but it like stays there. So rather than like looking at the, the execution plans and how the indexes are being utilized, you just throw in more capacity. So I think that's that's the bad thing that we need to avoid, right? So if you have metrics, use it effectively, right? So most of the, the current software or like the monitoring systems offers really uh, good insights of your application yeah. and uh, it's 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 a really a shame sometimes that we don't know how to like uh, utilize them full so you know uh, you know there's all always like so you know like uh, not even the root cause analysis but do a post-mortem or like post-mortem. Uh, yeah i mean something uh, just make sure like how the application is running is the way that you expect it to run Definitely. yeah because same like okay, okay uh, for for example if you're having a car okay yeah the car, the, the mechanics there to fix your car but uh, if anything happens like while you're uh, middle of a uh, road like a long ride you should be able to have the skills to like you know troubleshoot yourself a little bit of that right because mm, your yeah. car um, because it's the, the the issues may be unique 
<laughs> uh, right. <laughs> I, I remember uh, my mom used to, you know, slap the TV remote. <laughs> I mean, you know, but it's work, right? <laughs> Because I, know, I was like, okay, how, how this, you know, the circuit and how this uh, is the power of my mom or what? Like, you know, you yeah. slap the remote. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a miracle. It's, it's, a, it's a simple thing in Sri Lanka, right? Even I remember right, the CRT TVs. The, those yeah, things. yeah. We give it like a, yeah, like give a, a big give a small, slap. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's about like that. So, and and uh, lastly i think uh, uh, we can talk about the, the the chaos right so we have to be ready for that what do you think yeah i think yeah so uh, again right so that that's a kind of a, a funny thing as well right so you know we've seen uh, like articles and things uh, like saying mastering chaos right so then i kind of get the <laughs> point again so if you've mastered it is it chaos right so are we like <laughs> tricking ourselves okay we have mastered chaos there's no chaos but i mean like seriously what we need to know is right so if anything that can go wrong will go wrong and it will go wrong at like the very least expected moment right so if you are doing a big release it it will basically uh, you know like go down uh, in the most uh, crucial point so again like so uh, i mean some might agree some might uh, disagree right so breaking your system and figuring out uh, is uh, like what are the weak points so where are the uh, the the single points of failure so uh, the easiest points to attack rather than you discovering it yourself before someone else discovers is a is a good thing in my opinion right and then you you shouldn't be like uh, very naive about this and think okay why am i trying to uh, break my software right and uh, and uh, and again like uh, in some of the organizations i have seen it it's like disregarded doing that kind of thing as well so mainly that happens because we we don't have enough confidence uh, about the the software stack or the the automation stack we have right so if we build a uh, a particular server in a like a very uh, traditional manner and we have a recipe for that if we are if we the only thing that we have is the mi and we have done so many things on top of that there'll be immediate uh, reluctance coming to uh, do that kind of like a chaos testing or like bringing that server down because like whoever did that knows bringing that one up again involves a lot of manual steps so but the reality is that can happen at any given time right and then how ready you are to recover from that especially we we you know especially in the the cloud native uh, thinking patterns we talk about this uh, pets versus uh, cattle strategy right at any point of given time you should be able to get rid of a cluster or a pod or any resource and you should have enough automation or like recreate another thing from the recipe so i mean like even if you are not ready to do full on chaos at the beginning but at least start small and like uh, be ready for failure right so you know sometimes we have this like the we have like even if you are operating on prem you have your uh, especially the very expensive load balancers and a in a Uh, a passive state it's people are very sometimes afraid to switch over to that fail over to that right imagining <laughs> what kind of things <laughs> can go wrong right but ultimately and, what and, happens and you know, is... uh, another point i would like add like companies they spend millions to you know take employees to the other countries to annual trips so they you know they give other benefits and stuff when yeah. it comes to the security they 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 hesitate to you know uh, use a firewall or waf <laughs> to their web application because they think okay it's very expensive but mm. security matters right even though like uh, like uh, uh, trail logs in, in aws we have cloud trails right so yeah. uh, i have seen a lot of companies that uh, the, when someone is asking some help so i i just what i do is like just show me the trail log so i can uh, go and check so i can see what, what, what what's wrong so the right. simply they say oh we don't have enable that because it's very expensive <laughs> <laughs> but again like you know uh, money matters yes but you should know what to spend right rather than uh, 
it's it's same like again we can go for a car you have a burst engine inside but <laughs> your 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 outer body is like uh, perfect you know very polished painted well <laughs> mm. I, i hope one of my friend is listening this because i have a personal experience he got a second hand car and okay. <laughs> he forgot to uh well, how to say like uh, <clears throat> not forgot actually he spent a lot on the outer the outer body of the car and painted very well and <laughs> <laughs> we were in the gol uh, highway <laughs> and the car suddenly stopped is like uh, he forgot to uh, put water <laughs> inside the radiator i was good with i'm not good with uh, vehicle distributors uh, then he was keep showing no i put water <laughs> he put water <laughs> to the wiper actually <laughs> so uh, we enter the uh, highway around like uh, morning 9 am then right. we had to leave around like 3 pm i think we had a world record we did a record. <laughs> so like that like that so see it's anything is like we can apply to the same theories right yeah uh, exactly we have to make sure so again, again about the co- cost zack right so you know you might think okay day to day i am uh, like incurring this much if i you know enable this security feature or something like that but once you are you know like uh, if some attack comes and your site is down no imagine the reputation loss right so that cannot be like even sometimes can be recovered right if something of your organization reputation is down there'll be like the stock prices and like whoever the clients you have <laughs> everything drops, a to z everything will impact yeah so i mean uh, it's it's a long term investment that you're making doing the yeah, yeah, the small, small correct things yeah so imagine right personally okay uh, we have lot of uh, food delivery in singapore like um, you know uh, there are lot of available here hmm. so uh, one particular one uh, the use experience very bad for me you know like uh, i tried to <laughs> use several times right. then i switched to another one so it's a small thing but imagine right i may be one customer for them but again if if that keeps happening for uh, like 100 10000 customers they are losing customers so yes uh, again this small thing matters like the reputation Re- recently i think uh, i remember that uh, fastly uh, cdn right uh yeah, yeah, down. yeah. and it, uh, we even uh, it's a lot of like uh, even i got to know that a lot of major companies even using fastly that time because i had the experience with uh, uh, the magento you know, magento cloud after uh they release magento cloud uh when once they acquired by adobe uh fa- they they were using fastly because they want to vanish uh, for the full page caching so uh, imagine right how many uh, <laughs> e-commerce sites are down right yeah <laughs> so it's money right yeah i think uh, as a best practice they should uh, keep do this benchmark testing like uh, every one year or six month about the infrastructure like you said before like you should get the metrics from the observability then uh, you should uh, improve your infrastructure code like okay when we talk about devops uh, the 50% devops is do new things okay yeah, like new features maybe new uh, develop new things rest of the 50 what we should do is improve the current infrastructure and the uh, the application the architecture whatever right hmm yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah so that's really interesting uh, topic you were talking actually uh, uh, it's not more technical but can't say not more technical but it's uh, i hope it's not very boring because uh, uh, those are the main points we should uh, uh, consider you know organizations these silos these these uh, the organizations like uh, these uh, gap between groups so uh, thank you very much shamila i hope to uh, uh, join with you again for few sessions about these we, we can talk about microservices and you know a service mesh architectures uh, and there are a lot of areas to talk so we can yeah, meet we'll probably future, have so, a, yeah. another session and another session we can do it one yes yeah so thank you very much shamila for joining with me today and really really appreciate your time and uh, <clears throat> thank you again yeah <laughs> it was yeah. a really interesting one yeah and thank you very much uh, zack for the opportunity and like keep doing the good stuff right it's knowledge sharing is like very important Uh, yeah, not stressed that enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my company is Palo IT, right? Palo IT Singapore. So we have a thing, thing called we have our uh, five values. So we have one value. We we say it, we share that in our DNA. <laughs> ah, cool. Yeah. So we love to share. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then Shamila, have a nice evening and enjoy your uh, rest of the evening. So see you again soon with another episode. Okay. Take care.
Thank you, Chamla, for joining with me today. So if you all want to learn more about Kubernetes, microservices architectures, cloud-based applications, and so on, Chamla is doing an awesome YouTube channel with all these resources. Please go and check. I'll put the link in the description. So I look forward to seeing you again with another episode of DevOps with Zach.